Oh, hello. Let's take a moment and talk about a little introduction to something called chemical equilibrium, equilibrium or balance. And uh, to start things off, I'd actually like to go ahead and uh, propose a reaction which I think is not in equilibrium. This is the uh, combustion of octane reaction. And it's balanced up here on the board. And octane has the chemical formula C8H18, oct meaning eight, oct eight carbons. And this is a major component in gasoline that you go ahead and put in your car, lawn mower, motorcycle. And it's going to combust in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. And I'm listing these three things in the gas phase. Oxygen, 21% of our atmosphere is oxygen. So we've got plenty of oxygen around here. The oxygen goes into your engine by use of a carburetor or fuel injection system. Coming out of the tailpipe of these uh, internal combustion engines, I'm proposing that carbon dioxide is a gas, certainly, and water is a gas because of the temperature of this reaction. Although some would argue on a cold day when water is dripping out of the tailpipe of the car in front of you on the street, it's pretty cold. Maybe it's condensed or so and dripping out of the tailpipe. Um, the octane. It's a liquid at room temperature and pressure. And I have a little bottle here. And uh, over the years, came up with a nice little recipe here that uh, if I go ahead and put 19 drops into this large test tube, we uh, have a very nice demonstration. So let me put 19 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Some of you are hoping for more, going, oh, put in more, put in more. More is better. And more actually isn't better. If uh, I were to put in more gasoline, why, uh, no, it would flood, just as you might flood your car engine, because the recipe, or the balanced reaction, says we need two components, the liquid octane and oxygen gas. I'm going to put a lid on this. And I'm going to be a carburetor, a manual fuel injection system here. I'm mixing the liquid gasoline, octane, with oxygen. And uh, I don't notice any more liquid down at the bottom here. By doing this, it's evaporated. And I'm mixing it so that it fills the complete test tube. And uh, inside your automobile, lawnmower, motorcycles, these internal combustion engines, you have a spark plug. A plug that is a little device that goes inside the chamber or the, uh, let's see, cylinder. And a uh, little spark goes off and detonates the mixture. Well, I don't have a spark plug. I'm going to drop a match in. So I'll put on some glasses here and drop a match in and turn off the lights. Let me take the lid off and uh, put a match in. So here's the match striking and the lid coming off and a nice energy front. Nice little afterburn there as well. Oh, that was a nice. Oh, the reaction that took place, combustion of octane. And I maintain this was a forward reaction. And let me make an arcing arrow over the top here and write 100%, implying that uh, this reaction went 100%. Coming uh, into the tube was the octane, oxygen, and now remaining inside the tube is carbon dioxide and water. And what we're not seeing is we're not seeing carbon dioxide and water join up to produce oxygen and octane. We would say that's not a spontaneous reaction. And so this is a, a reaction that goes to completion. Now, the idea of chemical equilibrium is actually one that says, well, the forward reaction is happening. So octane and oxygen are reacting to form carbon dioxide and water. But the reverse reaction, carbon dioxide and water, are forming to produce oxygen and octane. Now, I maintain this is not in, in chemical equilibrium. This goes 100%. But let's take a look at a reaction that is in chemical equilibrium. And we have both the forward and the reverse reaction going on. But first, before we do that, let's take a look at some of these little bulbs over here. I uh, have three bulbs. These bulbs are filled up with a gas, NO2 gas, NO2. And uh, all three of these bulbs, this one here, this one on the table, and this one that I have in some hot water, are all filled up with the same concentration. So these bulbs all have the same color to them, some NO2 gas. So one of them is inside the water. The other one I'm going to go ahead and coat with some uh, pellets of dry ice to go ahead and cool that down. I have a little container here of some dry ice pellets. Let me go ahead and cover 
the NO2 gas with some dry ice. I can notice already that we uh, exhibit a little bit of a color change, implying that some type of a chemical reaction is taking place. Looks to me like that bulb is lightening up. We have our uh, control here at room temperature, the bulb in the warm water, and the bulb here at cooler temperatures. Let me put these side by side and maybe, oh, do a little job here surrounding the dry ice. The bulb's lightening up. Let me go ahead and do a balanced reaction for what I think is happening inside here. Balanced reaction is a couple of NO2 gas molecules are reacting to form an N2O4 gas molecule. Now, if I'm correct in saying this is chemical equilibrium, we have a forward reaction and a reverse reaction going on. I can denote that with forward and reverse arrows. Some type of a balance that we have some of this present and some of this present. And I'm shifting. I'm going ahead and saying whatever is present at room temperature, whatever amount of this and this are present in room temperature, I'm shifting that equilibrium by changing the temperature. Inside here, I'll maintain that the uh, flask, gas inside the flask is getting darker. And I have a little update here with our cooler bulb considerably lighter. We're shifting equilibrium. The idea is at equilibrium, this concentration remains constant. This concentration remains constant because every time a forward reaction occurs, a reaction in the reverse occurs. Now, if you consider that I took the bulb at room temperature, covered it with some carbon dioxide solid, the dry ice, to cool it down, I was shifting equilibrium. Why? I could say something like, during that process, I was making this reaction happen faster in the forward direction than in the reverse direction. So I was shifting equilibrium, making one species more predominant than at room temperature. When this reaches chemical equilibrium at its new temperature, meaning, hey, the color is not going to change anymore, we will have new concentrations of NO2 and N2O4, but they should remain constant as long as I remain at constant temperature. Some of these will continue to shift over, and simultaneously some of these will continue to shift over. Well, we have a little idea here that at chemical equilibrium, we have a forward rate, which I'll go ahead and call rate 1, and a reverse rate. I'll go ahead and write up rate 2. Rate 1 equals rate 2 at chemical equilibrium. We will get to another problem involving an acid in just a moment. This is the bulb that was in the warm water, the bulb at room temperature, and lastly, the bulb that we went ahead and cooled down to a considerable temperature, about negative 78 below centigrade. There's a little bit of blue that's gone ahead and precipitated out of this. And what we propose is that when the NO2 was made, it was collected over some copper, and the copper is an impurity and has made its way in there. You can go ahead and detect it at the low temperature. Look at the color difference between these three. We've shifted equilibrium.